Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the first in a series of webinars that will be running in the coming weeks. My name is Joanne and I'm a support team member. I'm joined today by Adam, who is another team member with support, um, and he will be presenting today's webinar. Okay. So today we aim to give you a general understanding of what a contact list is and how they can be used. We will run through um, three of the most commonly requested lists and you will learn how to send a communication to patients from a contact list. Um, please feel free to send through any questions you may have during the presentation as there will be a question and answer session at the end. And now that we know what will be covered in today's webinar, I will hand you over to Adam to begin his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Adam, as Joe said. So today we're going to be looking at contact lists and, and kind of how to how to use them, how to run them and kind of just what they're all about. Just firstly, I just want to look and, and just chat to you a little bit about a general understanding of what contact lists are and, and what they, they're for, what they can be used for to benefit the practice. So what are contact lists? So contact lists are really powerful tools within Exact. Uh, they allow you to find a particular group of patients who relate to a specific query. So contact lists can simply show you the number of patients that belong to that group, or they can be used to contact them as a whole. So we're going to look at how to create them in today's demonstration. Um, so how can they help your practice specifically? So due to COVID-19, I assume most of you have probably had to send out communications in the last few months advising that obviously you're not open at the moment and uh, don't attend appointments until further notice to your patients. Now, creating mass communications can be quite a daunting task, but contact lists can make this quite easy. So as many of you have uh, already seen, uh, practices potentially can start opening now from the 8th of June in England. Uh, and due to this, a lot of practices are gonna start to want to send out communications to their patients to change that communication from uh, don't, don't attend for the moment to we're, we're starting to open for limited services. And if you, if you wanna come in, then urgent treatment can be seen. So, with no further ado, what we'll do, we're going to pop over to the exact software. Uh, so bear with me a second while I just move this over. And we'll get on and start this training session. OK, so I've just moved into exact. So from this screen, um, obviously, you'll be familiar with the exact software itself. So you, you will need to be some sort of administrator. So I'd imagine a lot of you are principals or practice managers, um, or if you're not, then you most likely just need to get the practice manager's um, a login account for exact to be able to access this part of the software because it is under the administration. So once you're under administration, go down to contact lists. And then from here, you'll see this screen. Now in this screen at the top here, these are any previously run lists. So anything you've run in the past will appear here. So good chance you'll probably have something in there already. Now, Clicking on the little button on the left, there's a little box here. If you click on it, it will disappear. Now, what that does is it's just saying that it's complete. And what it means by complete is when you run a contact list, originally they were designed, as suggested by the title, to contact a list of patients. So your list of patients, my total patients here was 54, and complete is suggesting that I've sent a communication to 33 of those patients. Once you have completed them and you've ticked it, down the bottom, you've got a show complete button. And that will show you all of the previous lists that you've run in the past that have been completely finished and, and, and contact set. So I'll take this now for simplicity so we can just see in a more basic format. Now, as I said, today we're going to look at to create new ones. So all we need to do is go down to create list. And you'll get this little window pop up. Now, at the top here, you've got select patients. Select patients um, is almost can be sort of deemed as like another word for contact list. If you see this on any reports or anywhere else in the software, this almost always means that you can pull a contact list into that report to narrow something down further. So this is what we're going to click on to, to get into and make our contact list. But just before we pop into there, I'll just explain the description. So when you create a contact list, you'll create a name for it, which will appear in this top box. The description can be added just further detail or if you're editing an existing contact list you can pop it into the description field just to narrow it down a little bit further you've then got keywords now this isn't really used as such so i leave that for the moment and you've got a list for appointment booking which we'll go over once we've created a list and I'll explain what that's for so let's get back to creating the list so under select patients click on the little lines to the right hand side and you'll be able to select your query template 
Now in this list is all the different templates that I've created in the past. So this is um, like a list of, so not actual contact list, this is the templates that I can use to create a list. Now I'm looking to firstly look at how to pull cancelled patients back in. So anyone that's been cancelled in the past few months, I want to contact them and let them know for a start that we are we are now open and, and that they can start looking to rebook. Now I've not got anything on here that suggests that, so I'm going to create a new one. So in the bottom right, I'm going to click plus one. Now um, a, a popular list we've had as well is, is uh, active patients. So sometimes you want to look at all of your active patients. Um, and like I say, sometimes you want to narrow it down a bit further to just cancel. So to start off with, let's just get a list of just active. So we can just see everyone that's active in the practice. So you just need to name this. So I'm going to just pop in active patients. And then that's your description bar sorted. Now you'll notice in this box, you can't type. There's no, there's no typing method here. And this is because this is where your queries live. So to access the queries, you just need to press this little button down here. Now it's like a little arrow into a page and you would have almost definitely seen this in exact. Whenever there's an arrow going into a page, this is just to insert a selection. An arrow coming out of a page is to, to remove it. And then obviously your ED is edit. So we're gonna start off by inserting. So we're gonna insert a condition. Now the conditions are what determine what that group of patients need to, to adhere by. So we want to say that we want to look at all active patients. So for all active patients, we need to look through the list and find something that relates to that. Now, we've got a check-in inactive. So a check-in inactive means a patient is obviously inactive. So we want the opposite of that. We want a, a patient without a check-in inactive. Now, contact lists run in opposites. So for every query, there is an equal or opposite query. So if we go into a check-in inactive, you can see that you've got patients with or patients without. Now this sounds, sounds a little bit complicated, but the best way that I've, I've found to, to understand this is if you read it as a sentence in your, in your head, so patients with are check-in inactive, right, so that's inactive patients, we don't want that. So if we change it and then read it again, patients without are check-in inactive, that's exactly what we want, that's active patients. So if we okay this one, we've now got an active patient's description, patients without a check-in inactive, so active patients. So if we press OK to this, that's now created the template. So you can see under yeah, viewing query templates, we've now got this as a new template that we've just made. So if I go ahead and press OK, you can see it's now moved it into this select patients area. Now, because this is quite a basic contact list at this point, I'm not going to bother putting in any kind of description. Um, like I said, we don't need the keywords. So it's just a use list for appointment booking. So using this for appointment booking, what that can do is you may have seen before, down the bottom of your appointment book, you have a tab, uh, which you can get by settings if you haven't got it, but you can have a tab on there that says contact lists. And it's a way that you can run through contacting patients directly from the appointment book. So if there was a list of patients that had no email, no SMS, et cetera, and you had to phone them, you could potentially go run through that last little group of patients on the on the appointment book. For the most part, we won't, won't be using this. So we're going to leave that unticked as well for the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and run my list. So if I press OK, so we've run our list and we can see now we've got 117 patients. So I mentioned at the start there that the contact lists are quite useful tools and they can be used to obviously contact patients or just get a number because you might just want to just report and just get an idea on how many patients have cancelled in a certain time frame, how many have failed, how many new patients, etc. So if you just want the number, you can stop here and press no, and it'll get rid of this. So let's say no, we do want to definitely go ahead and run this. So we're going to press yes. Now we can see our list that's popped on. So we've got a, a full list of all of our patients. Uh, so we know that there's 117 in here. Now I normally encourage to go through and just check uh, to make sure that they all fit, which I'll explain on when we do another contact list in a moment. Um, so we can just go in and check each patient individually to make sure they fit the criteria. But where this one is very basic and we're only looking at active patients, we can see at the top that none of them have got a star, so therefore none of these are inactive. So this is how you would create a, a full list of active patients, everyone in the database.
So I'm going to come back out of this window and I'm going to use the little x underneath the big one. So not the x exact, the little one underneath. And that's going to just come back to this one. So let's narrow this list down a bit further. So we, we know what all of our active patients look like now. Let's create a new list. And we're going to click on the little lines again, just as before. And we're going to, like I say, create a brand new one. So we're not going to edit the active one. We're going to do a new one. So we'll do plus one. And then you've got another description box. So we're going to pop in here. And we're now we're going to look at, we want to look at a, a list of patients who are active, who have been cancelled or had have cancelled for whatever reason um, in a certain time frame. So pop in cancelled patients. And then what we'll do down here, we're going to do our little uh, insert patient selection again. So we'll click on that box. Now, the first thing we're going to do is what we've done before, and we're going to say, right, we want to look at active. So we only want our active patients, because if they've cancelled to say that they're moving away, you don't want to be contacting them to bring them back. So let's go to checking in active again. We'll say OK. And again, we're going to read it out. Patients with a checking in active. No, that's not right. We want patients without a checking in active. So active patients, so we'll OK that one. We're going to go back in and now we're going to insert a second query. So there's no real limit to how many queries you can have in here, but you'll see as you go through it and start practicing and playing with it, it can get more complicated the more you add. We'll add a second one in. So we're going to go down and we're now going to look for something that is relevant to cancelled patients. So cancel B and C. Let's look under the C column. So we've got cancellation reason, cancelled appointment, Cancel appointment with, with reason. So let's go for cancelled appointment. We just at the moment want to look at people that have cancelled uh, their appointment for whatever reason within a certain time frame. So I'm going to click OK on that. And again, we're going to read from the top. So patients with a cancelled appointment, that is exactly what we want. We do want to look for cancelled uh, cancel ones. Now let's just amend the date, date range. So let's say if we go from the 1st of March. Now, when you pop in a date, you can pop it in. Um, it's quite relaxed as to where you're sort of, if you have dots or slashes and stuff, so it's quite easy to type, which is great. Um, but you've also got the option to use a drop down or a calendar. So the calendar just literally pops up a little calendar that you can pick a date from. And the drop down gives you some other sort of more generalized options. So sort of a week ago, a, a, a week's time, month ago, et cetera. So we're gonna select today because we wanna look at everyone that's been canceled from the 1st of March up to today. You can narrow this down to treatment codes. Um, I'd suggest, given obviously everything that's going on, it's not going to be really relevant at the moment. You just want to see everybody. And again, you can narrow it down to provider as well. So you can select a specific provider that you want to see just their cancel patients. But again, for the moment, we're going to leave this as everyone. So we'll go ahead and say OK. And we're going to just press OK and move that into the template list. So that's now a created template that's, that's live and ready to use. So we'll locate this window and let's just run this list and see what we come up with. So we've got 20 patients. So let's create the list and see who we've got. So you can see we've got 20 patient, uh, patients. Uh, obviously, they're all active. None of them are inactive because that's what we've asked for. So let's just go through. We just want to go through and just double check some of these patients and just make sure that they do fit this criteria. So let's just go into, into one of these. So if I've right clicked on here, sorry. So I've just gone to a patient and right clicked. And I'm gonna move all the way down to edit patient. So if we go to edit patient, it brings up just their usual patients uh, window. If we go to the recalls tab, we can now see that they've canceled and they've canceled due to a short notice cancellation. So they do fit in the list because they've canceled with appointment. So I normally encourage when you create a list to just check a few and just ensure that you've done it right and that's the way you can be confident that you're the, the list you're making are giving you the right information so if you've got maybe 100 patients on there just go through and check two or three or four just make sure that they all look good so i've checked that one so that's had a cancellation due to covid19 check another one and that one's had lots and lots of cancellations for different sorts of reasons so we can see in here that um you can go through and just double check which ones have cancelled and why. Now, that's great. And obviously, we can go ahead and contact all of those. Um, but it might be that patients have cancelled on you guys or you've had to cancel due to COVID-19 or had to cancel for different reasons. Um, and with all that in mind, it might be that actually you want to narrow, narrow this down a bit more 
So let's say you want to see the patients that you've had to cancel specifically because of COVID-19, for example. So we can do that by, by just narrowing this down further. So let's, we're just going to exit back again, a little X. Now you can see the list uh, that we're creating and now starting to generate at the top. We've got our one that we've done before and this one here, so cancel patients. So I'm going to go into create list. I'm going to go to select the patient's little lines icon again. And then in our list of query templates, rather than pressing plus one, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to go to the cancel patients list or sorry, template that I created earlier. We're just going to right click and edit it. So what this will do is this will open that list, uh, that template back up again. And now in here, you can see that we've got what we put in there before, but that's, that's not right. We want to narrow this down further. So let's click on the insert icon again. And now what we're going to use, we're going to use cancellation reason. So if we go into cancellation reasons, again, read it out. So patients with a cancellation reason of, and then we can pick a reason. Now I'm going to select COVID-19, like we said before, and then okay that. So again, before you press OK, always read your template to yourself. So um, patients with a cancellation reason of COVID-19 and with a cancelled appointment between the 1st of March uh, 2020 and today, and uh, who have, uh, sorry, and without inactive checks, so, and patients who are active. Um, so that is now a template that's going to give us just COVID-19 cancellations. So if we press OK, and we'll just check that, now you'll see under select patients, it's come up cancelled patients. So I'm just going to pop in the description, uh, COVID-19 cancels, and then press OK. Because that's just going to narrow that description down for me a bit. And now you can see before we had 20, but only 16 of those were due to COVID-19. So there's four patients on that list that had cancelled for other reasons. So it might be that different cancellations you want to approach differently. Um, or that you just want to sort of contact a specific group for something. Um, so this is what these lists are really useful for. So I'm going to go ahead and press yes. So that's now loaded that list. Again, as I said, as soon as you create a list, first thing I'd always do is just double check. So let's just go into one of the patients, move to edit patient, and just under their recalls, just check. Right, so that patient has had a cancellation for COVID-19 within that date range. So we're now looking for two criteria, remember, because we've got the date range of the 1st of March. And we're also looking for patients that are specifically cancelled because of COVID-19. So they might have had a cancellation previously, like we cancelled on the, the 11th of, of March, but they've had a COVID-19 one within this date range. And that's why they're showing on the list. So hopefully that will make sense. So that's how you would go through a, um, a, a list of patients that have cancelled. I just want to have another little look at um, a different list with you guys. So if we come back out, what I'm going to look at, and this is one that um, is a, tends to be a little bit more complicated, seems to throw people. So we're going to look at sort of vulnerable patients, so patients over a certain age. Now, if we go down to create list, mm -hmm. and then under select patients, just click on the little lines. And then we're going to go to plus one, because this will be a brand new list now. So let's just call this as a title of vulnerable patients. Okay. Now, for this one, again, we want active patients. And we're going to go into the insert icon and just select active. Uh, sorry, I'll check in inactive. Press OK. And again, read it. So patients with, we want patients without. So patients without are checking in active active patients so active patients and now we want to say who are vulnerable so we're going to look at an age range and we're going to say in this example let's say over 65 so patients that are over 65 we want to maybe just contact them and say look we are open for business but um uh, can can we just come in for urgent treatment and things like that so we're going to go down and just look for something that we can select a specific age range with so if we scroll around we can see in here we've got date of birth so we can use the date of birth to determine their age, and then from the system, we can then pull patients that are just under or over a certain age. So if we say, okay, you've got patients with, so we do, we want it as a with query because we want to specify this list. And now you've got 
uh, date of birth from and date of birth to. So the from date, when you're doing patients above a certain age, is always the date that's furthest away. And then the to date would be the, effectively the younger date. So if we said over 65, this would effectively be like their birthday. And then this would be sort of way back into the past. So now I'm going to show you a way of coding this that makes life so much, so much easier. So if we do the to date, so what we're going to do, I'm going to do D for day and then put a slash in and then put M for month and then put another slash and then Y for year. So it's literally D slash M slash Y. Now, once you've got this format in, that means today. At that point, you can then put in a, a number of years, months or days by simply pressing minus or plus and then a number. So this will now denote 65 years ago. So if I wanted to change that and have that as, let's say, minus three, that will then be three months ago. So you can see it's quite a useful tool and the system will understand it. If I click out, it will autopilot move to that to that area. It knows it knows what it's doing. So I'm going to say D slash M slash Y minus 65 in this case. And then on this one, we want to go back further than that. So this one needs to be um, maybe sort of D slash Y slash, uh, sorry, D slash M slash Y minus 99, which would then say, well, anyone from the age of 65 to 99, we want to contact. Now, 99 is actually the max you can use for this format. So if you have patients that are over 100, then it won't pick them up. So in this instance, I'm just going to say the 1st of January, 1900. And then that takes that problem away. Obviously, if the date range thing and the, the format confuses you, you can just work out the, the dates of birthdays and things and just go from their date of birth up uh, and then it will be anyone above that age. So let's press OK to that as well. So we've got patients with that date range. So this should now find us patients that are over 65. So I'm going to OK this one. We've now put our new template in. OK this one. And again, we'll run this list. So I've got 22 patients that fit this criteria. So again, I'm going to create the list. And as we said before, just go through and just double check a couple, just make sure that they're within that date range. So they're 65 and 10 months, 65 and 11 months, 71. So it, it, the dates are working, it all looks good. So we're, we're, we're looking now at just patients that are uh, in the vulnerable category that we might want to contact. So that's how you pick up this particular list. Now, there's something else I want to look at as well today, which, um, as Joe mentioned earlier, we want to look over sort of sending communications. Now, um, a lot of questions we've had previously have been, have been about how to actually send these communications out and how to send as a group. So for this, I'm going to go back into the list we made earlier. So the list we made earlier was this active patients one. We had 117 patients, but we hadn't contact, uh, we hadn't completed any of them. We hadn't contacted anyone. If I double click on this, you can see that we've got our full list here and inside the window. So let me just go back for a second. So you had tick boxes along the left to complete entire contact lists. But when you go into a contact list, you then have ticks along the names as well. Now, these ticks are a useful tool to, to use to work out who's got specific contact methods or who have been contacted. So I'll show you how to use this in a second. Now, in the example today, I'm going to go over how to send an SMS to this group of patients. Now, um, you may want to send via email or letter or, or something else, um, but in terms of changing and amending the templates, um, to, to work out how to do that, to find out, there is actually a YouTube channel that we, we've made. Um, so if you just type in Software of Excellence on YouTube, uh, what that will do is that will bring you up um, a, our YouTube channel, and from there, you can go to playlists. If I just show you on here, you can see under playlists, you've got return to practice, essentials checklist. Now this goes over all sorts. This is this covers uh, how to add appointments to short notice lists, uh, how to play with UDA manager and understand that properly, care manager, um, how to edit uh, email templates in detail, um, how to uh, take away the COVID information that we put in to our SMS reminders at the start of all this. Um, and obviously we turn their reminders off, so how to turn them back on how to turn recalls back on. So this is a great playlist. So I'd definitely encourage you to check this out because this, this will 
um, give you a way of getting this information quite quickly. I think the longest video is in here is probably about sort of seven, eight minutes. So it's, it's quite quick watches. So for creating templates to use in your contact, uh, contacting groups of patients, I'd, I'd pop onto YouTube and just check it out on there. Um, so let's just dive in and imagine that we've got our template now. So I'm going to go down to SMS in the bottom right. So you'll see I've got a little SMS button. Now, obviously, if you want email, you've got email, letter, etc. So I'm going to go to SMS and you get this little window pop up. Now, on this window, you've got please select contact method. So you've got single SMS or multiple. If you go single, what that's going to do is it's going to send an, an, uh, an SMS to the justice one patient, which obviously we don't want to do. So we're going to go multiple. Again, you can group by family. Now, Exact's really quite clever with this. So obviously, if you've got family members that you've set up by the patient details page, um, if what it will do, it will send a letter, SMS, email, whatever it is you've selected, to the head of family. Now, to be honest, I mean, obviously, SMS is chargeable, which is something you've got to bear in mind when sending these out. Um, so whatever you're um, paying for your SMSs, that you'll be charged at your normal rate for those. Um, but typically you wouldn't group by family with SMS because phones are a bit more personal than like a, a head email account or a, or a front door for, for a letter going through it, obviously. So I tend to leave this off for, for SMS. But what we do need on, which is really quite important, is tick as complete when message sent. So what that's going to do, it's going to tick the box on the left when the message has been sent. So if we pop this box on, what that'll do, anyone that doesn't have an, an SMS mobile number, it obviously won't be able to send it. So it will show us that they've not sent it by leaving us with those patients. And then we can communicate them to them in a different way. Maybe then we might move them to the appointment book and, and contact them manually from there. So there's, there's quite a helpful way of doing that. So we'll say tick is complete when message is sent and press OK. Now on this page, um, this kind of is an opportunity to recover and re-narrow down your list. So if any of your patients, say you, you forgot to say that you, you want patients that are um, active only, uh, and you had inactive patients as well, you could hit this box here, so that are not active. So it'll just look at um, active patients, um, or if you've been contacted a certain amount of times already, you don't want to keep contacting them if you wanted to narrow it down from sort of a surname perspective. So this is sort of additional tools. Now, my personal opinion, I, I tend to prefer to do all, the, all of this in the contact list itself and make sure it's all spot on in there and then come back to this. So I tend to untick these. Now, the one that I will always leave is this one at the top. So with the following status, so this is quite important. So this is um, what's looking at the ticked again. So for this first one, obviously we know our entire list are not ticked. So in all honesty, it doesn't make much difference at this point. Now, as soon as we've sent out all our SMSs, if we then said, right, I want to send the remainers uh, a letter, if we forgot to send this, everyone you sent an SMS, you'd end up sending a letter, which is obviously going to waste uh, money and productivity, and also it's going to annoy our customers because they're going to end up getting two communications for the same thing. So it's quite important that this one is ticked. So we'll leave that on just for good practice. At that point, we're going to press OK. Now, this next window, um, you've got the option to send all of your SMSs straight away or stagger them. Now, obviously, we've all got sort of servers and stuff and, and in our practice, and we've all got limited levels, uh, sorry, not limited, but like kind of a, a varying levels of, of technical knowledge. But as a server computer, there is only so much it can take when it comes to sending and, and processing stuff. So when you say sending all the SMSs straight away, the server's got to physically sit there and work out and write all these text messages, work out all their numbers, send them, and then your internet's got to handle and, and cope with all of this being sent out at once. So it can cause problems if you send them all away uh, straight away. So I'd always recommend to stagger these. Now with SMS, it's super easy. You hit stagger, you've got times in here. Now, if you haven't got any times or the times are really odd, I'd encourage you to go through, delete all of these and then hit plus one. And then you literally pop in a start time and end time and then just select your days and it will fill it all out for you. So I've just done Monday to Friday, eight till five, and that's it. So SMSs will then send between those times. Um, that's obviously to stop patients from receiving a text message at three o'clock Sunday morning, because that might upset them. So once you've done that, uh, a message should be sent every certain amount of minutes. So how long in between messages do you want to wait? 
you shouldn't need long. It doesn't take that long to send a text message, just long enough for the server to get it, send it, and it to be received. Now, we all know if you send a text message from one person to another in a house, it will go through almost straight away. So a minute should be long enough. Two minutes would probably be particularly safe. Now, if we said two minutes, I've got about 120 patients I'm sending messages to. Uh, it's 11.32 now, and it's saying that it all sent all of these by 128. So it's going to take an hour and a half, two hours, and then all of those patients would have had them sent. Obviously, depending on the amount of patients you're sending to, you might want to adjust that. But like I said, I'd always leave a gap. So once you've done that, we'll press OK to there as well. So this next window here, um, you can select provider or specialist. Now, this would just be if you've got merge fields in the text uh, that spe specify provider or specialist. Um, if you wanted to aim it at someone specific, you can do. But I would tend to leave these because otherwise it will, auto it will just auto fill their own provider and specialist in. Um, SMS template is obviously very important. Now, you can type this freehand at the end, the SMS, if you wish. You will get an option to do that and we'll get an option to edit our template as well in a minute. Um, but I would always encourage to have a template first because obviously you can reuse it. You've got a, a, a model that you can build before sending and, and know exactly what's gone. So I've created one already. So this is on um, in relation to our sort of recent sort of news with the opening. So I've said practice opening. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and press OK to this as well. So this is one of our final boxes. So I press OK here. Now you can see practice opening. Um, now I've got my little message in here. Um, now, something to bear in mind with this particular method of sending, this is an SMS. SMSs have always had 160 characters as their limit. Uh, this isn't an SOE thing. This is just across the board for text messages everywhere. So with uh, that in mind, there is, if you, over, if you go over 160, um, and this is the same, like I say, for your phone, your carrier will charge you for a second message. Um, so what you need to do, you need to tell exact to do that. In the interest of trying to save you money, uh, exact software will truncate it to a certain amount of messages. So it'll it will force it to one message. So if your character total, which is can be seen down here, was so let's say 200, which would have been a second message, it will just cut the message off, which obviously you don't want. So ensure it's either under 160, or um, you have sorry, or you click the drop down and, and truncate it to a second message, which will give you more characters. Um, last thing to mention on that, the 160 characters, down here you can see I've got 123. This does exclude merge fields. Now merge fields are these guys, so patient title, patient last name. And you can access them from the view merge field button here. Now as I said, there's a there's a uh, video on that explains this properly, but you can literally just copy and paste into this window any merge fields you want. So things like the patient title, patient last name, I've got the practice phone at the end. Because the uh, the calculation doesn't include these, obviously it doesn't know how long a last name is going to be, for example. You need to kind of guesstimate these to an extent and, and just work this out. Obviously, the phone number you'll know should be sort of 11 digits, maybe with a space, maybe 12. So add that on and then just make a sort of uh, a sort of idea on, on how that's going to be just to ensure that you don't have any cut off. Once you're happy with this and you've got everything set up, you can then simply press OK. And you'll see quite quickly pop up on the screen the second is going to go through all my text messages, create them all, and now it's down to my server to do the rest. So from this point onwards, my server is going to sit there and it's going to create these text messages properly and then start sending them out. And it's doing it under the instructions that we already preset to say only send out every one minute. Okay, so we've got our contact list, everything's been sent. So at this point, um, we now can see. We go back, let me just come out for a moment. So you can see it's completed 59. So we've got 117, but it's only sent 59. So if we go back in, you can see that I've still got quite a list here, but not as many as before. Now, if I hit the show completed, you can see the ones that have sent. Uh, obviously, I've got error messages on mine because I've, I've not linked up to a proper, a proper SMS service. Um, but with this, you can now see and pick out the customers that are, or the patients, sorry, that are going to specifically need to be contacted in a different method. So if I untick this show complete, it's now only showing me the patients that don't have an SMS mobile. So this is now where I might contact them in a different route, which is obviously be down to you guys how you want to 
how you want to sort of manage that, whether it be a, a, an email, if they've got it, again, there might be some about a letter or contacting them via phone. Okay, so I think that's everything uh, from me today in terms of the actual contact list training. Um, I'm conscious I don't want to kind of overwhelm you with information, that was quite a lot already. Um, so I'm going to hand it back to uh, my colleague Joanne now to be able to just go over with you some questions and answers. Okay, thank you everyone, just handing over now. Thank you, Adam. Um, I hope you all found that helpful. I know some of you had some issues with the sound in the beginning. Um, we have been recording this and there will be a video and a link available that we will send out to you guys. Um, there are a few questions come through. I'll just highlight a couple of them. So um, one that came through is basically whether or not you could create a list of patients that say just had an e a Gmail email address. It, it can kind of do that, but not through the email selection start at the beginning. So we would create a list of say patients with their email addresses. Um, and we then have the option to export that into a Excel spreadsheet. And from there we can search and identify all your patients that have Gmail email addresses. That's probably something that will be covered in depth at probably a later time. Um, but it, it is possible to do that. Um, another quick question somebody asked is whether or not um, patients can manually be added to a contact list. So once you've generated a list, if, if more patients can be added. Um, at the moment, no. So once you have your criteria and you create your list, that is your list ready to go. Um, if more patients register with the practice, say with an email address, um, it doesn't update that when they register. So you'd have to recreate the list again whenever you go to send out a, um, a communication or an email to your patients. So it's just something to bear in mind. Um, and another quick thing that was raised is whether or not um, the, the GDPR criteria can be added to these, these lists. So when we are selecting our criteria, there is an option which is under contact preferences and whether patients or have opted in or not. But with regards to, say, sending out a communication to saying you're reopening your practice, um, it's, it's OK to not worry so much about your marketing side and if they've opted in because it's general information and it's important information. So it's something to be, just bear in mind there. Um, and if you ever do have a list that you've created that it sends a few emails to some patients and not others, it may be that, say, not everyone has an email address or that box isn't ticked, so that's why it doesn't send it to them. Um, or potentially at the beginning of the list, um, it, it one of the steps is missed, if that makes sense, when sending out. So you have the option to say, send from A to Z or A to B. So it could be that it, it just gets cut off mid sending or something like that. It's the only thing that would usually stop it, um, unless they don't have an email address, but that's something we can, um, come to at a later date. Um, if we, if you have asked a question and I haven't sort of covered that, don't panic too much because we will respond to them all as much as we can and then send you the information that we have on it. Um, from today's session, we've recorded it, we will get um, a video put together that we will send you all uh, along with some documentation on what we have covered today. And another thing to bear in mind is obviously with the news last night that dentists can potentially reopen from the 8th of June. Um, now more than ever, it's so important for us to all get back up and running as efficiently and quickly as possible. Um, our guys are still offering bounce back reviews to discuss how we can help you all return to the new normal um, and features that are available to practices within Exact. So if this is something that is of interest to you. We, there is a feedback form at the end of the webinar, so just submit that on there and give us any feedback and questions and queries that you, you do have, and uh, we would appreciate that one. And as Adam mentioned before, we do have our YouTube channel, which you can find by searching um, Software of Excellence on YouTube, where they have lots of videos and different playlists that are available. So we hope you found this helpful and informative and we'd like to thank you all for joining us today 
Um, please stay safe and hopefully we will see you at the next, the next webinar. Okay, thank you.